Welcome to another week of uh, uh, getting ready for church school at Grace United Methodist Church. Um, <clears throat> this week we're responding to uh, another question that some of you raised, um, and that is the eroding support for public education in the United States. Now, on the surface, this doesn't, you know, rate very high on the intensity list of issues when you we've dealt with gun violence, abortion, flags in places of worship, and those are some of the hot issues. Uh, the eroding support of public education is not a is not a very hot issue, but it probably affects more persons, more families, more entities in our culture than any of the quote hot issues. Now, this is the question that I received. Quote, I am so concerned about what's happening in public education. I am afraid of what has given our children a place where they can realize their potential will not survive the harsh criticism and declining financial support that is happening. What can the church do to help, or is it the church's business? Now, this haunting statement in question is sort of marked by depression and desperation. And as I uh, attempt to respond to this question, um, I, I want to make it clear that I'm trying to respond from the perspective of faith, not from a personal perspective. Many of you know, both of my parents were school teachers in public education. Um, a lot of you know that I served on, as an elected member of the Board of Education in, in Derby for eight years. Um, I served as president of Southwestern College, a, a private uh, college. I have plenty of personal responses to the question. However, the question requires us to respond and explore from a perspective of our faith journey, not from personal experiences or opinions. Now, the history of the Methodist movement in the United States provides a helpful place to start in responding to the question. <laughs> Throughout our history of the Methodist movement and now the United Methodist Church, uh, we are clear. Our book of resolutions is clear about our advocacy for and our support of public education. Now, to be sure, the Methodist movement founded colleges and universities in the United States, higher education, uh, before the states were even formed, when we were just colonies. Um, to be sure, the United Methodist Church was a significant player in local churches throughout the country in pre-kindergarten education that's now sort of been handed over to the state. However, in terms of primary and secondary education, any attempts by the United Methodist Church to have elementary or high schools is few and far between because we have been convinced that only the state, only the public, can provide educational experiences for all children, excluding no child. Now, what's the basis for this commitment uh, from a community of faith? Well, you know, it begins with the campfire story in Genesis about human beings created in the image of God. Not just a few human beings, but every human being, without any exceptions, are created in the image of God and are persons of sacred worth, every single human being, and certainly every child. Then we go on to the preachers in the Jewish tradition that we call the Old Testament. And again, those preachers were lifting up 
the value and worth of every individual, including those that might appear to be a, a broken reed or a dimly burning wick, as the preacher Isaiah talked about. Every person is a person of sacred worth and must be valued. And then we get to the ministry of Jesus. The Old Testament had the commandment to love God with your heart, soul, and strength. Certainly an important commandment. But what did Jesus add? Mind. Indeed, love God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. The mind, intellectual development and growth, according to Jesus, is at the very core of caring for God, caring for others, and caring for yourself. So we have this tradition in the Judeo-Christian um, religious tradition of our world that is the foundation of the community of faith called United Methodists, never wavering in our support for public education. Because only the public, which is committed to the common good, can provide a strategy for education for all children. The strategy of public education is the only way all children can have access to and participation in the development of their minds as they grow to maturity and realize, and in most cases, experience their potential. Now, this support for public education is so important in 2022, for we are experiencing a movement by some in our society including some who claim to be Christian, to undermine, underfund, and underappreciate public education in the United States. Most of these persons are advocates of private education provided to those who can afford tuition and be selected to attend. Let me say that again about private education. You have to be able to pay tuition and you have to be selected to attend. There's nothing wrong with private education unless it is proposed as a replacement for public education. And the United Methodist support a public education is based on the foundation that what is best for every child must be supported, especially when it's challenged by a movement which is based on what is best for a selected few, for anything that is for a selected few, if that is all that is available. That is the foundation of a caste system of governance, not a republic existing equally for all. No exceptions. The question ended up with quite a punchline. What can the church do to help? Or is it the church's business to help? United Methodist Church says clearly, yes, it is our business. And every local church must be about the business of supporting public education. So the questions that I have for us to think about and prepare for our conversation Sunday about is, have we practiced what we preach? These are the thoughts and questions I would have for you as you think about the eroding support of public education and the question that is formulated for our thinking together this week. First of all, 
have we exercised our responsibility to be involved? Hands off is not an option. Grace United Methodist Church's commitment to Irving Elementary and providing a place for youth to gather before in-service days in our secondary schools is the beginning. But we have only just begun. What is next? Secondly, have we exercised the responsibility to the vote for candidates who support what is best for all, excluding no segment of our community and no child? Thirdly, have we developed strategies to affirm classroom teachers? those who are fulfilling what many say is the most demanding, challenging, and important role in our culture today. And finally, what's your response to the faith foundation for the support of the United Methodist Church for public education. Enjoy your thought and we'll enjoy our conversation together. Thank you.